occupying offensive lineman and still making the play. 31 tackles for loss in his career. Quick pitch. Best looking to cut back. Does. Dancing around. Still up. Chop it best. To the far sideline. He's gone. Best is going to take it all the way. 93 yards to the end zone. Can you believe that run? I'm not sure there's anyone else in college football who could deliver that. Well, he is the most entertaining back in college football since Reggie Bush, hands down. And UCLA had this play pretty well defensed. Job at best gets most of it done on his own. And you turn him loose in space, it's good night. Giorgio Tavecchio on for the extra point. So they go to Tavecchio, who was their starter for a part of last season. Best. Well, we'll let you watch. We'll shut up. Man. Javid Best, uh, originally born in California, Bay Area, California. Uh, we're in Arizona right now. I moved out here two years ago to start training for track and field, uh, running for St. Lucia in the Olympics. And um, currently I'm out here. I'm enrolled in school, an uh, audio school called Crass. And so uh, I'm learning to be an engineer right now. Okay, music engineer. Yeah. Okay, so that explains everything in the room and yeah, where yeah. we are right now. This is like my little home studio that I built uh, after using some of the stuff I learned in like the first couple of weeks after school. Uh, me and my classmates, yeah. uh, you could see a lot of the people that came and either helped out or recorded something or just came in here and chilled. Like they all signed the wall. So it's been a lot of people that helped out here and there everywhere. So and this is like an investment. So this yeah, isn't yeah, just yeah. like a little hobby or something. This is something that you have a passion for or love for. Can you? Can you kind of talk about where that passion and where that love first started or where it came from? Uh, I say it, it first started just me just loving music. And that's where it just first started. And I feel like a lot of athletes could definitely, definitely feel with this because as, being an athlete, music kind of goes hand in hand. You need music to get you to warm up. You need right. music, pregame music. You got different playlists for everything. So I've always been like attracted to music and then, um, I'll say in high school, one of my friends got a little demo. I think it was Fruity Loops. And my, my friend <laughs> Ivan, he had Fruity Loops. He got a demo. I think it was from his cousin. And we only had like a handful of sounds on there, but we was just making beats left and right, trying to make different ones and adding stuff to them. And so ever since then, it was like just like a hobby. Like my main thing was to play my sports. But when I got home, either playing video games or I was just trying to mess around with a beat. And that's been that way since since high school, and just now recently with me not playing football and, and not running track, like um, I've got so much more free time. I was like, let me take this seriously now, and so that's when I decided to roll into school. Talk about high school, the school, and education, and how you can remember your first memory uh, um, as far as getting the love and creating music or getting behind the scenes was back in high school. But you were still focused in on your sports, yeah. you know. You know, with the best foundation, and we're trying to preach this education uh, first and foremost, and education now. You know, what I'm saying, not waiting. Could could you explain a little bit or talk a little bit about maybe if you would have been in school and chose music and music right at their high school, and you said, you know what, this is fun. If I would have went 100 percent music, where would you see yourself right now? Uh. I probably have a bunch of Grammys. Right. Okay. I definitely have a bunch of Grammys. I mean, uh, I just feel like, I personally feel like if I put my mind to something and I got my mind wrapped around it, I'm going to work at it and I'm going to succeed. The only way, I, sometimes I tell this to myself, the only things I've ever failed at is the stuff that I quit. Right. 
and I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the exact same way, but you don't think about it that way. You're just thinking about it as failure, but you only fail because you quit. Right. And so that's the way I approach a lot of things that I do. If I put my mind to it, I'm going to succeed no matter how long it takes. You're just going to work your way to the top. Right. Kind of like the same drive and same desire that you use to push yourself through, whether it be sports, whether it be something you're going through in life, or whether it be something educational for yourself. You use that same drive as a, no matter what, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to succeed no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. And that's, I think that's important, especially for the youth. The message that they need to know is like, you're going to hit those obstacles. You may fail or what you see as failed. But when have you feel that you have failed or that when you could have quit? You know what I oh, mean? Oh, man. I got, I got a perfect <laughs> okay, example cool. of this. Yeah. Uh, it was 2013. Uh, 2012, I got a concussion playing against the 49ers. And I set out the rest of the year uh, expecting to play the next year, training, best shape of my life, right. uh, training all off season, all summer. Season rolls around, I still don't get cleared. And so it comes to a point where they got to put me on IR again. And then the real questions like, is he ever going to play again? And so when that hit, when that hit me, that was a point where I could have just, just threw in the towel and just yeah, quit. Yeah, and I felt like, it. I felt like it you almost every day. You hear a lot of stories about a lot of athletes day. quitting and then, you know what I'm saying? Because they hit that, that, well, exactly what you're going yeah. through. Right? Yeah. And, um, so yeah, that just hit me, it hit home, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I got a good, I got a good family base. I mean, you're my cousin doing this whole interview with me right now. Uh, I got a strong, I got a strong group behind me, so they wasn't gonna really let me just fall. Right. And so I, I just bounced back. Uh, the first thing I did was I got into coaching. I went back to school, and then and then I started running track again. Right. And so for me, it's always just like it doesn't matter what happened in the past. It's, I'm always looking forward to what, what what's gonna what am I gonna do next. And so I just I just didn't dwell on the fact that I couldn't play any football anymore. I was just more appreciative that I had the chance to, and that I made it that far. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So it's just it's just all about your perspective. Yep. Exactly. So yeah. you said not necessarily taking it as a failure, but like a lesson, a lesson learned. Yeah. You know, lesson learned. An opportunity. Yeah. And moving forward. So you yeah. had this passion for track. You always had a passion for track. You were track before football. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But now it's music, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I know you love track. You still train. You still work out. I see these visuals that you have around your house to remind you of where you want to be in the next, however many years, right? These personal goals you set for yourself. But I, for me, it's like when I hear you speak about the music too. That passion is just right there, and it's matching almost the yeah. sports now. And what I want people to get from this interview, specifically the the youth. Specifically here now, you can relate your love coming from high school. It is why not do both in high school, right? Why why put sports first? Why not put a, a whole lot of things first? So Could you not? see yourself maybe putting more of an effort with the music as you were learning? Uh, maybe I going into college, maybe you'd be like, you know what? Instead of doing African American studies, yeah, maybe I, I could do something music. more music based. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think there's opportunities there, mm -hmm. but most most like. I didn't know. Right. So thinking back, like, I didn't know that, I didn't even know this music industry really existed outside of just being, like, a rapper or a producer. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know there were so many different avenues of being an audio engineer or working on film or working in broadcast or live sound. Like, I didn't know any of that existed. Yeah. So as far as me growing up, it was like, you either rap or you make the beats. And if you don't do that, like... You nobody else even knows anybody <laughs> yeah. else, but now being older and actually researching and being told and stuff, so I see that there's way more avenues. 